Hello, this is Dr. Greg Pontone for the Psychopharmacology Institute. Today I'll be doing a take on medical cannabis in the treatment of Parkinson's disease by Tracy Aldean. The current article investigates the impact of medical cannabis on the symptomatic treatment of people with Parkinson's disease. The prevalence of Parkinson's disease is increasing, and while dopamine-based therapies can improve motor symptoms, there are few alternatives and even fewer options for the treatment of non-motor symptoms. The authors of the current study believe medical cannabis may improve both motor and non-motor symptoms in people with Parkinson's disease. The current paper is a retrospective study of patients enrolled in the New York State Medical Cannabis Program. It is not a randomized controlled trial and does not compare medical cannabis to placebo or prospectively control for other factors. This study cannot suggest dosages or formulations for medical cannabis due to the potential variability in formulations from different dispensaries and variability in how patients self-administered those formulations. However, it does systematically examine the symptomatic changes, adverse events, and concomitant medication changes that may be relevant to medical cannabis use in people with Parkinson's disease. So, this study enrolled 69 patients who are eligible for the study. 15 out of the 69 patients discontinued medical cannabis before the end of the study period. The most common reason for discontinuation was lack of efficacy. Only four individuals discontinued due to an adverse event. Although 48% of patients with Parkinson's on medical cannabis experienced at least one adverse event, none experienced a severe adverse event. Somnolence or fatigue was the most common, followed in order of decreasing incidence by confusion or cognitive impairment, dizziness, anxiety, euphoria, vision changes, and just a few hallucinations or delusions. 87% of the patients had improvement in at least one Parkinson's-associated symptom after starting medical cannabis. These included on the motor side, tremor, gait disturbance, rigidity, bradykinesia, dystonia, and dyskinesia. And on the non-motor side, pain, sleep disturbances, depression, and anxiety often improved. However, 28% of the sample had worsening of at least one of these symptoms with some patients reporting a mixed response, with some administrations producing relief, while others produced worsening. Interestingly, tracking changes in concomitant medications revealed that patients taking opioids at baseline, which was about 25, more than half either discontinued or reduced opioid use during medical cannabis treatment. There was also a trend toward reduction in benzodiazepine and muscle relaxer use, but these did not reach statistical significance. The most commonly recommended starting formulation of medical cannabis was oral tincture with a one-to-one -one ratio of THC to CBD with a maximum daily dose of 14 milligrams plus or minus 5 milligrams. So in summary, this retrospective chart review was conducted to evaluate the real-world impact of medical cannabis on Parkinson's symptoms. 87% of patients experienced improvement in at least one symptom. Both motor and non-motor symptoms seemed equally likely to improve. However, 28% of patients had worsening of at least one symptom. Adverse events were common, occurring in about half of the sample, but none were severe, suggesting that medical cannabis was generally well-tolerated. Similar to other studies on medical cannabis and Parkinson's, 56% of opioid users in the study were able to reduce or discontinue their use of opioids during medical cannabis treatment. This would be a potential benefit as opioids can be particularly problematic for patients with Parkinson's, increasing falls, confusion, sedation, and constipation. The current study provides reasonably sound, uncontrolled observational data on the use of medical cannabis in people with Parkinson's disease. Although the study results are not sufficient to establish evidence-based prescribing of medical cannabis, it does provide important information on possible risks and benefits of medical cannabis to help inform the care of patients who might choose this alternative treatment. Thank you. I hope this was useful. <music>